Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every day. Today is a little bit different because our good friend and streamer, John, is actually going to be presenting today's deck. It's a mono black shakedown deck. I hope you guys enjoy it, and do not forget to check out the live streams, times, and everything he will talk about in the intro. Hope you guys enjoy. Welcome to the channel It Resolves. My name is John, better known as Country Pride, on the live stream. So if you guys want to catch those, it's Monday, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. We do giveaways every month. All you got to do is challenge me to a game and win. Every win gets you an entry into the giveaway at the end of the month, and you get to pick the format. You get to pick your deck list. I have to randomize mine. So it's a lot of fun. We'd love to have you guys come join us. But with that, I'm going to give you guys another deck list that I like taking on the standard rank ladder when I do play the standard rank ladder, which is not often. But this is a fun one. I hope you guys enjoy it. Here's Mono Black. All right, guys, so here is the mono black deck list that I got going. We'll cover this real quick, real fast. Uh, the sideboard's got lessons in here. You can make the lessons whatever you want, just whatever you're comfortable with. This is just what I utilize in this package, but go ahead and hop in here. We have two eye twitch and four shambling gas, because more often than not, I want to hit shambling gas on my opener to use with uh, Deadly Dispute so we can drop the two tokens, draw the two cards, and go really wide for our meat hook massacres or get into a quick blood on the snow if we're in an aggro matchup against the opponent as well. But if you absolutely need to, you can do the negative one, negative one on like a Thalia or a Luminarch Aspire, something like that to remove it from the field. But like I said, more often than not, we're using it for the tokens and the card draw. The eye twitch is the learn capability to get to our lessons. So we've got a couple of them in there. We're not really reliant on lessons. So that's why we only have two. You can split this up into a three, three package if you want. We have three tenacious underdogs in our two drop slot slot because it's a three, two. People like to remove it. If it goes to the graveyard and it's not exiled, then you can use its blitz ability by paying four, paying two life. You attack in with it and then you sacrifice it at the end of your turn. And you get to card draw. The Mono Black's got a lot of card draw going on right now, which we also get into in our three drop slot, which is the Shakedown Heavy. We run three of because it's a six four body. It's got Menace. If it goes in, it hits. It hits hard. So more often than not, your opponent's untapping it so it can't attack and letting you have that card draw. And card advantage in this deck against our opponent is very bad for them and very good for us. Another three drop slot is the Nighthawk Scavenger. It is a three drop flying death touch life link, and then it gets plus one uh, for the different number of card types you have amongst uh, your opponent's graveyard. And plus, people don't like attacking into uh, death touch creatures, so it's really good, and it's a really good way to get life back uh, off the life link. In our four drop slot, we got Body Launderer because it kind of can trips with Junji on the Blood on the Snows, and then Shenanigans ensue. But Body Launderer, it's got Death Touch as well. It's a 3-3, which isn't great for a 4-drop, but it's still really good because it's kind of built in evasion with the Death Touch. And again, for some reason, opponents don't like to attack into them. Probably because they're losing creatures, but you got to get rid of Death Touch creatures somehow. So that's why we're utilizing it. Whenever another non-token creature you control dies, Body Launderer gets to connive. That's where you draw a card, you discard a card, and then if it's a non-basic land card or if it's a non uh if it's a non-land card, then you get to put a plus one, plus one on Body Launderer. And then whenever Body Launderer dies, depending on however much its power was, then you can pull a creature back out of your graveyard to the battlefield, which just kind of recycles our creatures. And if you have to, you got Shakedown Heavy if it was a six or more. You also have the Nighthawk Scavenger, Tenacious Underdog, and the Shambling Gas and the Eye Twitch. So this uh, deck list becomes very recursion heavy with the uh, other creatures that we have in here. On the next one, we've got Junji. It's got Flying and Menace. Again, a lot of our creatures have built-in evasion of some type. So uh, Junji was just a really good fit. It's our five drop at a five, five dragon with the Flying and Menace. And then when it dies, you get to choose one of the following. Each opponent will discard two cards, lose two life, or you can bring back a non-dragon creature from your graveyard back to the battlefield. And that's usually what we use Junji for, especially if we blood on the snow to reset the board. We can get Junji to trigger off, bring Junji back. And then if Body Launderer was there too, it can trigger off and we can use Junji to bring Body Launderer back, Body Launderer to bring something else back and blood on the snow to bring Junji back. So it's just one giant cantrip where we can wipe the board state and go wider than our opponent really, really fast. So it's really fun deck to play. 
We do have one Soren in here because we can draw off of the plus one. We can create a two, three flying lifelink vampire or the negative seven where you deal 13 damage to any target and you gain 13 life. But mainly for the card draw. Loth, again, card draw, but we uh, usually do her negative three right off the bat, which creates two, two, one uh, menace reach spiders. And then we usually use her out for her uh, draw ability. We hardly ever get her to a negative eight, so I'm not going to cover that one. And then, of course, Professor Onyx, her plus one is a draw ability as well. We lose one life. We look at the top three of our uh, library. We select one and then we put the others in the graveyard. Again, we can can trip these and fill up our graveyard off of our Professor Onyx. And we just got to get the cards that we need to utilize, depending on what the situation is. Her negative three ability isn't really that important to us, but it can be utilized in a pinch, which is each opponent sacrifices a creature with the greatest power among creatures that player controls. The Deadly Dispute, I've already explained why we cover that one. Uh, the Invoke Despair, target opponent sacrifices a creature. If they can't, they lose two life. You draw a card and then you repeat the process for an enchantment and a Planeswalker as well. So it helps us get rid of Planeswalkers. Blood on the Snow can help us get rid of Planeswalkers if we need to. Plus, reset the board and cantrip into everything. And we can use Meat Hook Massacre as the go wide sweeper in this, but we can also cast it for zero to add insurance. So, if we're already wide, then it's just going to hurt our opponent to get rid of our creatures. And that's kind of what we want to do with that is get every little bit of life coming off of our opponent. Well, I mean, that's really, I guess, the object of any game. But uh, Meat Hook doesn't have to be cast as a sweeper, it can be utilized as insurance. For our land package, really easy. 18 snow-covered swamps, three Hive of the Eye Tyrants, one Takanuma's Abandoned Mire to help us get a Planeswalker back if we need to. The great, uh, Hive of the Eye Tyrants is to disrupt our opponent's graveyards. And then we've got Field of Ruin to help protect us against creature lands that our opponent may be running. And then, of course, one Agadim's Awakening, because if we can cast this for eight, then you can get back a Junji, a Body Launderer, a 3-drop, a Tenacious Underdog, and one of our 1-drops. So you can get full value out of the Agadim's Awakening. And there you guys go. There, there you go, guys. Did I just have a stroke? I just went backwards on my words there. There you go, everybody. <laughs> there is Mono Black. I hope you guys enjoy it. I'm going to let you get to the gameplay. I'll see you guys at the end of the video where I'll give you a couple of ideas where you may be able to change this up if you wanted to, but have a lot of fun with it. It is a lot of fun to play and it's definitely different than the control decks that I put out. So uh, for those of you that are non-control players, here you go. Control is not the only thing I play. I hope you guys enjoy it. Have a great day. Stay safe, be happy and healthy. Peace. I'll see you at the end of the video. All right, we go first. It's a whole lot of land, but uh, we'll keep it because it's not in the deck. That means they're out of the deck. All right. It's me, Mario. Mario. Person's gonna take a while, man. They took a while to load up. So, that's probably a phone player, maybe. So we have Zorius Control. Zorius Mage Grass. Nice. It's fine. Probably should have left Shambling Guess back to get the token off of it to be able to hit into Blood on the Snow quicker. I've only got so many creatures, so that's the good side. I would definitely like to get to a point where we can blow up their dual land up there.
You can take it. You can block it with both. Or you can let me draw another one. Awesome. Um, let's go. Juaris. They got Juaris. That sucks, but if not, I'm not worried. Right on. see them concede here. <laughs> All right, that's what I thought. Yeah. GG's, bro. GG's. Alright, so it sucks that the opponent goes first, but yeah, man. We like this hand a lot. We like this hand a lot. It'd be really cool if we're just playing some type of aggro, I guess. Maybe. I don't know. So, I mean, Invoke Despair is only going to get one, depending on what kind of aggro they're playing. Oh, yeah. It would be great if they're playing aggro. It would be amazing if they're playing aggro. Please drop a Luminarch Aspirant. Oh, you're playing that crap too? Right on. I dig it. I mean, just depending on what they play out, we might be able to use Meat Hook on the next one to clear the board. And then we'll have Invoke Despair fairly close behind, hopefully, if we can pull a land off of Deadly Disputing the uh, Shambling Ghast when we use it as a blocker here. Oh yeah, they're going to be so pissed. It's going to be amazing. Oh, oh, okay, yeah, definitely split all. So yeah, we absolutely have to go Me Hook Massacre on this turn. Uh. Good lord. I'd be mad. I just don't know what they're playing. I mean, I know it's a Zorius, but... Okay, double strike. Cool. In that case, let's go here. What do you got? Spell Pierce? Fading Hope? Might be 
spell pierce. If so, tenacious underdog goes to the graveyard. So since they might have a slip out the back, if we block with the shambling gas, they would phase it out. Probably just create the token. Oh, a security bypass. Okay. Interesting. Definitely interesting. What in the fresh hell? The double, double strike sucks. What's really good is we have Invoke Despair on the next one. Bad news is, is that thing may be huge on the next strike. They're not going to drop another creature with haste to get it out of there, so that's fine. Hmm. Gotta be slip out the back. Let's tack in and see if they'll block. Because then if they will, that makes the invoke despair that be that much better. But if they got to slip out the back, then there's not a whole hell of a lot we can do. Oh, sweet Jesus. We got Jawaris, we can pay it, but like I said, if they got to slip out the back, not a whole lot we can do. Yeah. There wasn't a lot. Yeah, they suck. Alright. Interesting, but they suck. Man, these connive cards and double strikes. This is a new one. I haven't seen anybody playing Twin Blade Geist. It is interesting. All right, cool. Good game. GG's. All right, so we go first. Uh, I don't love it, but I don't hate it. So we might be able to ramp a little bit into this stuff. We'll keep. <laughs> Ricky Martin. <laughs> Okay, so red deck modifiers, hasty stuff. Yeah, we're gonna hold off. I 
Okay. Sure. So they got another play with fire. I don't know. That's fine. They're going through their hand fairly fast, which I really like. I really, really, really like. Um, we're going to wait because if they've got the three drop, it's going to modify itself. Oh, uh, they don't? Okay. Alright. So, this is fine. Let's go ahead and thin out ours a little bit. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do this so they don't get the uh, plus one, plus one counters. We're far enough ahead now, we can get the scavenger on the board and the shakedown heavy, so we can start some card draw and threaten with a death touch. Oh, uh, well, shit, never mind. We're just gonna keep screwing them up. Oh my lord. Oh my lord. Look at this. So this is why we run one Agadim's Awakening. We got a one drop. We have a two drop in here somewhere as well. And then we've got threes, fours, and fives. Things are really good. Um, yeah. And yeah. We're far enough ahead now. The, if they play out into this, then we have the Meat Hook Massacre. But we are threatening with the two big bodies. Especially that Death Touch. Alright. That's what we do want. We want to get their Brutal Cathars out. So. Uh, cancel. Next. Lion. Do your thing. Awesome. Oh, that's gotta hurt. Ah, Ricky Martin. All right, opponent goes first. We have an early blocker. It can give us a token. We'll have a couple chances to also draw into some lands. We got the shakedown heavies to start drawing cards to. Got blood on the snow. We'll keep. We will keep. Oh, nice. Zunder, you're a well. That is awesome. Man, I do not want to play this if we don't have to. We have creatures one through five in here. So. Sure, bro. Sure. Uh, did you not hit land? You're playing that rock. But right on. I'll bite. You can have Thalia, you can have Luminarch Aspirants. I'm fine with it. You do you. Taxes and taxes. Lots and lots of taxes. Probably should have attacked in there because more than likely they would have just let us have it. Oh my god. They are wasting so much time.
That's a big hit. I mean, we'll be taking a big hit too. You gotta double block it, buddy. Sure. Oh my gosh. Mono white, what is going on? Mono white, what are you doing? Mono white. <laughs> oh, mono white. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I would. I would. I would absolutely do that. Hope you got another one of those. No? That's what you got? Cool. Bro! Have you seen this trick? Have you seen this trick? Oh my gosh. Um Yeah. Let's take that shit. <laughs> Let's take it. No, I don't care. <laughs> sure. Um if we do it for three Oh jeez Mono White, what is going on here? What in the fresh hell? Zunder, Zunder, Zunder. I don't even know what to tell you, buddy. I don't even know what to tell you. Don't play Mono White. All right. Good game, Zunder. Good game. <laughs> GG's. That was enjoyable. I hope you all enjoyed that, too. That's for those that loathe Mono White. All right, so there was the gameplay. Um, I don't know. I'd have to look back. I think we played five or six games. We only lost one. It was really effective. It was a lot of fun to get back and utilize. And I haven't been on the ladder in a while. That's why you see me still in gold. I do the live streams and we do direct challenges. So I don't really go on the, the ladder much. I don't dig meta. I don't like playing against meta. I like seeing other builds and stuff like that. And I get that a lot in the live stream direct challenges with the community that I hang out with. So I have more fun there than I do in just regular arena. So that explains the rank. However, we did have a lot of fun taking this back out and taking it for a spin just because it showed how viable it still is. How viable will it be after rotation? I don't know. We're losing a lot of stuff at rotation. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a big shakeup. But guys, here's something that I was thinking about that you could shake this up a little bit if you wanted to. You could find a way to put in some Infernal Grasp in your two-drop slot with your Tenacious Underdog, maybe taking out like one Shakedown Heavy or something. You could also split this into a three and three package if you wanted to lean on your lessons a little more. You could also use Consuming Curtains in the one drop, which is really effective. That I don't know if you guys have used Consuming Curtains, but it's a pretty good card. Uh, the four drop slot, I also like using stuff like Nogger Dragon or Necro Dragomancer. Is that right? I hope it is. Necro Dragomancer. Snow Zombie, where if you kill an opponent's creature, if it dies, it dies with an ice counter on it. It gets exiled and you can cast it whenever you want, utilizing any color mana. Um, it's a lot of fun as well, especially if you get in an aggro matchup, but it falls kind of flat in like bombardment decks and stuff like that because you're not really getting anything out of it. 
Uh, six drop slot, you might be able to take Professor Onyx out of here and put in like a Burning Rune Demon. Uh, so you can kind of tutor up a couple of cards. Um, however, it is a really good card. Burning Rune Demon is a really good card, but so is Professor Onyx, and she's a good one to hit with Burning Rune Demon. So maybe you drop a lull. You don't really have to drop anything, guys. You don't. Uh, it's just going to be totally up to you and what, what play, play style you want. Um, the four Invoke Despairs have been a blast. I love Invoke Despair. But, I mean, look at where Mono Black is right now. You get card draw off the Blitz. You get card draw off and not being able to attack. You get card draw off your Planeswalkers. You get card draw off your Invoke Despairs and your Deadly Disputes. You can outgas a lot of other decks right now and mono black i think is in a really strong spot where it will be after rotation i don't know maybe that's something i try and build here in another month or so is uh a rotation proof mono blacklist just to kind of see what we're looking at um it's still got a lot of good cards that are going to carry over after rotation but we're also losing a lot of really good stuff too but uh there you go guys that's mono black that's my version of it i hope you guys enjoy it again stay safe be happy and healthy Peace.